Welcome to the Leaderboard Gamers! Hosting today's video is another Leaderboard member, Jennifer. She's an amazing person, you're absolutely gonna love her. Jennifer, take it away. Hey everybody, from Half-Life to Counter-Strike, Left 4 Dead, and Steam, the Valve Corporation is one of the most successful video game companies in the industry today. My name is Jen, and here at the Leaderboard, we're gonna be giving you the complete history of Valve. Well, as complete as whenever this video is released. Is Half-Life 3 confirmed? It all started on November 3rd, 1962, where the future co-founder and director of the Valve Corporation, Gabe Logan Newell, was born. In 1983, Gabe dropped out of Harvard University to work for Microsoft for the next 13 years. On August 24th, 1996, Valve is formed in Kirkland, Washington by Gabe Newell and Mike Harrington. Fun fact, the formation papers are signed on the same day as Gabe's wedding. Also in 1996, the Quake Engine license is acquired from ID Software, thanks to Michael Labrash, and production commences on the soon-to-be-known Half-Life, thanks to the Washington-based Sierra Online publisher. Also in 1996, production commences on Valve's second game, Prospero, which was to emphasize exploration and intricate storyline in combat. Also in 1996, Valve recruits and hires two game teams, including the first international employee from the UK. In 1997, Gabe promises that if Half-Life becomes the number one selling game, the company will take everyone on vacation. However, after internal review, Half-Life was deemed not good enough to ship, and the team returns to the drawing board and essentially starts over. Also in 1997, Prospero is permanently shelved, only a year after starting the production. In May of 1998, Team Fortress software is acquired. Valve's ulterior motive in buying Team Fortress was to develop a sequel, but like many of Valve's releases, the game wouldn't come to fruition right away. On November 1st, 1998, Half-Life Day one, the original demo is released. The demo was bundled with the Voodoo Banshee graphics card and it circulates far beyond the original intended audience, and Valve realizes the level of anticipation for the full game. On November 8th, 1998, Half-Life is finally released for Microsoft Windows, and following a certain Black Mesa incident, the world is never the same again. Also in 1998, Valve takes its first company vacation to Cabo San Lucas, Mexico, with 30 employees and zero children. In 1999, Valve started to establish a pattern of supporting the best mods and occasionally acquiring them. On February 12, 1999, Half-Life Uplink was released for Microsoft Windows. It was a demo for Half-Life which included the levels and areas not present in the full game. On April 7th, Team Fortress Classic is released, which was effectively the same mod redone in Half-Life skin. On November 1st, 1999, Half-Life Opposing Force is unleashed. This is the first expansion pack for Half-Life, and it follows the events in Black Mesa from the viewpoint of an invading soldier. Half-Life Opposing Force was developed by Gearbox Software, which went on to become the Borderlands developers. In 2000, Valve Software announced the PowerPlay project, which was a technological initiative headed by Valve and Cisco Systems to decrease the latency for online computer games. On January 15th, Mike Harrington dissolved his partnership with Gabe Newell, leaving Newell as the sole head of Valve Corporation. On November 1st, 2000, Ricochet is released, which is a multiplayer mod of the first-person shooter Half-Life. On November 8th, Counter-Strike is released, which was developed by Min Lee and Jess Clay. The tactical shooter was first released in beta form in 1999 and gained a sizable audience right away. Valve took note, hired the two devs, and released Counter-Strike 1.0 in an official capacity a year later. In 2001, Counter-Strike soon becomes the number one premier online action game, even over the most popular multiplayer first-person shooter games like Halo or Call of Duty. On June 1st, Half-Life Deathmatch Classic is released, and on June 12th, Half-Life Blue Shift is released, which was developed by Gearbox Software. Half-Life 2 Blue Shift is the second expansion pack for Half-Life. On November 14th, 2001, Half-Life was ported to the PlayStation 2, along with the cooperative game Half-Life Decay. Also in the year 2001, the Power Play project is quietly abandoned. In 2002, Valve outgrows its original Kirkland office and moves to downtown Bellevue, Washington. Also in the 2002 Game Developers Conference, Steam is announced. Valve Steam offers to third parties its new suite of tools and services, which it originally built to service its own games like Half-Life and Counter-Strike. Also in the year 2002, Valve aggressively addresses the issue of rampant online cheating with the Valve Anti-Cheat System. 
Between 2002 and 2005, Valve was heavily involved in a complex legal showdown with its publisher, Vivendi Universal, under Vivendi's brand, Sierra Entertainment. It officially began on August 14, 2002, when Valve sued Sierra for copyright infringement, alleging that the publisher illegally distributed copies of their games to internet cafes. Valve later added claims of breach of contract, accusing the publisher of withholding royalties and delaying the release of Counter-Strike Condition Zero until after the holiday season. Vivendi fought back, saying that Gabe Newell and the marketing director Doug Lombardi had misrepresented Valve's position in meetings with their publisher. Vivendi later countersued, claiming that Valve's Steam content distribution system attempted to circumvent their publishing agreement, and Vivendi sought intellectual property rights to Half-Life and a ruling preventing Valve from using Steam to distribute Half-Life 2. In April 2003, Valve dropped the LLC from its title and became simply Valve Corporation. On May 1st, 2003, Day of Defeat is released, which is a World War II-based multiplayer shooter mod of the original Half-Life, with full support of Valve. On September 12th, 2003, Steam is finally released. It was first positioned as a simple digital distribution service whose main purpose was to deliver patches and other updates to online games more easily. More than a few of Valve loyalists, however, weren't happy with Steam's online authentication, game launching, and digital right management requirements. On November 18th, 2003, Valve's first official Xbox title is released, Counter-Strike. Also in 2003, a thief infiltrated Valve's network to steal and disperse the Half-Life 2 source code, which was still in production at the time. On March 20th, 2004, Counter-Strike Condition Zero is released. On June 1st, 2004, the Source engine is finally unveiled through Half-Life Source. The Source engine brought the usual, but nonetheless impressive, upgrades better lighting, more realistic physics, smoother graphics, etc. And Source has powered every Valve game since 2004. And since Source is free to the public, it's been used by thousands of modders who've made games out of Valve's releases over the past decade. Some of those mods like Dear Esther or The Stanley Parable have gone on to achieve notable successes of their own. On October 7th, Counter-Strike Source is released. And finally, on November 16th, Half-Life 2 is released. Half-Life 2 was the first game available through both Steam and in retail locations, and Half-Life also becomes Valve's second Xbox title, wowing audiences and critics alike with its looks, atmosphere, and inventive combat. When the dust settled after the big launch, the same post-launch flurry of mods and expansions that followed Half-Life 1 followed Half-Life 2. The most successful of those mods was a simply named sandbox tool called Gary's Mod, which has since made more than 22 million in sales and has been behind a large number of machinima-style videos. On November 29th, 2004, Judge Thomas Samuel Zilli ruled in favor of the Valve Corporation in the Valve vs. Vivendi lawsuit. Specifically, the ruling stated that Vivendi Universal and its affiliates, including Sierra Entertainment, were not authorized to distribute Valve games, either directly or indirectly. On December 1st, 2004, that multiplayer component to Half-Life 2 was released called Half-Life 2 Deathmatch. On September 26, 2005, Day of Defeat Source is released. And on October 27, 2005, Half-Life 2 Lost Coast is released, which is a promotional tech demo showcasing the high dynamic range lighting capabilities of the Source engine. On July 2nd, Half-Life Deathmatch Source is released, which is the multiplayer component ported into the Source engine. On November 15th, 2005, Half-Life 2 is released for Xbox. Also in 2005, Valve hires six students from the DigiPen Institute of Technology after seeing their demo of the game Narbacular drop. The first third-party games were released on Steam in 2005. This was a landmark in digital distribution. Steam gives PC developers an alternative to retail for their games. The platform soon became profitable, and those profits only increased as more and more publishers and PC gamers turned towards digital distribution. Also in 2005, Valve posted on the Steam website that the two companies, Valve and Vivendi Universal, had come to a settlement in court. Electronic Arts announced that they would be teaming up with Valve in a multi-year deal to distribute their games, replacing Vivendi Universal from then onwards. As a result of the trial, the arbitrator also awarded Valve over $2 million. 
on June 1st, 2006, Half-Life 2 Episode 1 is released, which is Valve's first experiment in episodic storytelling. It's the first installment in a planned trilogy of sequels to Half-Life 2. Team Fortress 2 is revealed at E3 2006, and the new cartoony look does not go over well. Also in 2006, California-based developer named Turtle Rock Studios announced that it would use the Source engine to create a new zombie-themed survival game called Left 4 Dead. On October 10, 2007, the Orange Box is released. The Orange Box contained two previously released titles and three new products. Team Fortress 2 was the long-awaited sequel to the classic multiplayer game Team Fortress 1, Half-Life 2 Episode 1 and 2, which was raising the bar for emotional storytelling, and Portal, hailed worldwide as an instant classic. Every game in the Orange Box collection was well received, but in particular praise went to Portal. It was a master class of a game design and something legitimately unique in the gaming market, and many people now consider it to be one of the greatest accomplishments of the medium. The Orange Box launched on Xbox 360, PlayStation 3, Microsoft Windows, and Steam, which helped bring Valve's catalog to an even wider audience than before. Also in 2007, Steam Community is released with the first wave of features designed to help friends connect and socialize via the Steam platform. In 2007, Steam reached 15 million active users playing over 200 games. On January 10, 2008, Valve acquired Turtle Rock Studios with the explicit purpose of finishing and releasing Left 4 Dead. And on November 18th, Left 4 Dead is finally released. Left 4 Dead launched on Steam, Microsoft Windows, and Xbox 360. It only had four levels to start, but each was dictated by an adaptive AI that changed item spawns, music cues, and zombie types each time you played it. It didn't have much on a written narrative beyond survive and shoot zombies, but the gameplay could legitimately be called dynamic, and its co-op made it fun with friends. Like Portal, Left 4 Dead felt like something fresh, and it sold well and achieved widespread acclaim. Also in 2008, Steamworks is unveiled, making the business and technological tools of the Steam platform available to third-party developers free of charge. At this time, Steam hits over 20 million users and over 500 games. Also in 2008, Team Fortress 2 gets a major class update for the Medic, Pyro, and Heavy characters. These updates were delivered via Steam. In April 2009, Valve sued Activision Blizzard, which acquired Sierra Entertainment after a merger with its parent company, Vivendi Universal Games. Remember these guys? Activision had only paid Valve part of the award money, refusing to pay almost the half a million dollars, claiming it had overpaid that sum in the past years. At E3 2009, Valve surprised the community by revealing Left 4 Dead 2 early, pegging it to arrive in November of that year, and fans were not very happy. The backlash stemmed from Valve's earlier promise to continue to supporting the original Left 4 Dead with downloadable content and expansions after it launched. With a brand new title coming so soon, they thought the first game would be abandoned, and they'd have to plop down another $60 to get all the new content. Even close to 40,000 fans started to boycott the new Left 4 Dead 2 game on Steam, but as usual, things started to quiet down. Just one year after Left 4 Dead 1 is released, on November 17th, Left 4 Dead 2 is released. Pre-sale numbers are the biggest yet for any Valve game. Also in 2009, Steam ships its first downloadable content update for an indie game, The Maw. Steam Cloud is released, offering seamless online storage for any file types. Team Fortress 2 releases the Sniper vs. the Spy update, followed by Outright War. Also in 2009, Team Fortress 2 ships its first hat. What's your favorite hat? I'm curious. In 2009, Valve hired Ice Frog, one of the leading guys behind World of Warcraft 3, Defense of Ancients, and sent him to work on creating a kind of but not technically sequel to the original project. On April 8th, 2010, Valve won the Escapist Magazine's March Mayhem Tournament for the Best Developer in 2010, beating out Zynga in the semifinals and Bioware in the final. Good job, Valve. In December 2010, Forms named Newell as a name you should know, mainly for his work on Steam having partnerships with multiple major developers. Also in 2010, Valve moves to a more expansive location in Bellevue, Washington and Valve announced that Steam and Source will be available for Macintosh and Linux. 
Steam got a much needed user interface upgrade in 2010, and now you can shop for user generated content in the Steam Workshop, buy non gaming apps, check your profile from the Steam smartphone app, vouch for intriguing new titles on Steam Greenlight, and so much more. Valve also announced Portal 2 is going to be coming in just one year. In 2010, Valve began development for Dota 2, and Left 4 Dead received many expansions of its own, and could be considered an all around success after Left 4 Dead 1. Shortly after Valve filed its trademark for Dota to secure the franchising rights for Dota 2, Dota All Stars LLC, run by former contributors of the game's predecessor, Defense of the Ancients, filed an opposing trademark in August 2010. Half-Life 2, Half-Life 2 Deathmatch, Half-Life 2 Episode 1, Counter-Strike Source, Half-Life 2 Episode 2, Team Fortress 2, Day of Defeat Source, Portal, Left 4 Dead, and Left 4 Dead 2 were all released for Macintosh in 2010 for the OS X system. On April 19, 2011, Portal 2 debuts with multiple platforms to critical acclaim. On Microsoft Windows, OS X, PlayStation 3, Xbox 360, and Steam, Portal 2 fleshed out the original into a longer adventure and adding a co-op mode. It earned high praise once again and was notable for bringing special Steamworks support to its PlayStation 3 version, which is a surprising move since Newell had called the PS3 a total disaster four years earlier. On June 23, 2011, Team Fortress 2 goes free to play. In November 2011, Steam service suffered a very bad hack. Newell has revealed that the intruders obtained access to a Steam database in addition to the forums, giving them access to information including usernames, passwords, game purchases, email addresses, billing addresses, and encrypted credit card information. In 2011, Dota 2 premiered at Gamescom in Cologne, Germany with the first annual Dota 2 Championship. In 2011, Dota All-Stars LLC was sold to Blizzard Entertainment, the developer of Dota's platform Warcraft 3 and its world editor in 2011. After the opposition was overruled in Valve's favor, Blizzard itself filed an opposition against Valve in November 2011, citing their license agreement with developers as well as their ownership of the Dota All-Stars. LLC. On May 11, 2012, Blizzard and Valve announced that the dispute has been settled. Valve retained the rights to the term Dota commercially, while Blizzard reserved the rights for fans to use the trademark non-commercially, and changed the name of their StarCraft II map, Blizzard Dota, to Blizzard All-Stars. On August 1, 2012, Valve Corporation announced revisions to the Steam Subscriber Agreement, the SSA, to prohibit class action lawsuits by users against the service provider. Alongside these changes to the SSA, the company also declared publicly the incorporation of Valve SARL, a subsidiary based in Luxembourg. On August 21, 2012, a modernized Counter-Strike dubbed Counter-Strike Global Offensive was released. In 2012, Valve's 44th international hire clears immigration. In Q1 2012, the new employee handbook rolls hot off the presses. You can check out the handbook link in the description below. I totally recommend reading it. It's really funny. In 2012, Valve acquired Star Filled Studios, a two-man gaming company, and opened a San Francisco office. This year, Valve also announced that they were working on a console PC hybrid for the living room that was unofficially dubbed by media as the Steam Box, a precursor to such a unit as Steam OS, a freely available Linux-based operating system that builds upon the Steam client functionality that includes media services, live streaming across home networks, game sharing within families, and parental control. In 2012, Valve heads to the big island of Hawaii for its 10th company vacation. Number of employees is 293 and number of children is 185. In July 2013, Dota 2 is formally launched. It was received well and it's earned itself a rabid, dedicated community of players. Also in July 2013, Valve officially announced Pipeline, an intern project consisting of 10 high school students working together to learn how to create video game content. In August 2013, the small two-man team out in San Francisco, their office was closed, Valve deciding that there was very little benefit coming from the arrangement. In September 2013, Steam OS is officially announced as the first of several announcements related to the Steam Machine platform, one of the announcements being a unique game controller. 
On October 17, 2013, the Blizzard All-Stars was adapted into a standalone game and renamed Heroes of the Storm. At the 2013 DICE Summit, Gabe Newell confirmed that he and director J.J. Abrams were collaborating to produce a Half-Life or Portal film, as well as a possible new game. Where is this game? Also this year, the following games were all released for Linux and OS X. In January 2014, Valve announced that it had surpassed 75 million active user accounts on Steam, and there are over 3,400 games available this year. In 2014, Half-Life 2 Shield Portable, Counter-Strike Global Offensive, Portal, and Portal 2 is released. Also in the summer of that year, Valve announced that the company's own SteamOS-powered Steam machine would be delayed until 2015 due to problems with the game controller. On March 3rd, 2015, Valve announced the Source 2 engine. March 15th, 2015, Valve and HTC announced a joint project to develop Vive, a head-mounted virtual reality display. The companies are working with Google, Lionsgate, and HBO to develop content for the device. In 2015, the Steam Store is now the premier PC marketplace for AAA and indie games alike. And of course, it gives you those delicious Steam sales every now and again. All of this is to say that Steam's success snowballed into something that's now Valve's greatest asset. It serves tens of millions of users today and takes up enormous amounts of the PC market and is only getting more robust as time goes on. Thank you for watching this video, guys. If you liked the video, let us know that you liked the video by hitting the like button to like the video. Be sure to subscribe to the leaderboard for more videos. Let us know in the description below what you think we should do next.